Bobby Bobby. Sparkles in him. Yeah, I got a haircut. What of it? When I was young, I remember my mom receiving Victoria's Secret magazines in the mail. P paper magazines, that is. Not the... the other kind. Those I'm very well versed with, too. Although, ladies, keep gaslighting, gatekeeping, and girl bossing. I would flip through these magazines and, and be amazed at how beautiful the women were. I would also cross their eyes out and draw black holes over their mouths. But that's a discussion for the therapist that I don't have. Not your guys' problem, okay? The moral of the story is that nice guys always finish last. Oh. What? No. No, no, the moral of the story is that I thought these women were something aspirational. I mean, who doesn't like looking at beautiful women? Straight women and gay men love girls too. I mean, not in a, I want you kind of way, but you know what I mean. Another thing I always wanted to do when I was little is watch the Victoria's Secret fashion show, but my mom never let me. Was it because my mom was afraid of my dad getting a hold of it on the DVR? No. No. It was because she didn't want me to compare myself to supermodels and ruin my body image. Because she's a great mom. That's why. That's what they are. Super models. They're shooting up that compound V. And not in their arm. What? Did I just... What? Definitely not the average woman. Mm. I'm not saying average here as a way to diminish, I'm just saying, plain and simple, it's a fact. Supermodels don't look like the average person. Victoria's Secret holds a special place in my heart for what it has always signified to me. That I could look at hot women and pretend to be looking at the clothes. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, let's just get into how they hate transgenders and fat whales, shall we? Victoria's Secret was founded by Roy Raymond and his wife, Gay Raymond, no? On June 12th, 1977 in San Francisco, where all great business ventures are created and operated. The first store was opened in the Stanford Shopping Center in Palo Alto, California. Yeah, stolen land, that's what I say. Inspired by an uncomfortable trip to a department store to buy underwear for his wife, Raymond set out to create a place where men would feel comfortable shopping for lingerie. He wanted to create a women's underwear shop that was targeted at men. Thank you, Roy. I always get so uncomfortable walking in and seeing underwear on sexy women. That makes me uncomfortable. Raymond, how about you just say that you like wearing a thong and heels while getting railed behind from a twink? It, it happens to the best of us. Yeah, yeah. If that's not the most male gazy thing you have ever heard, then I don't know what is. Hey man, there's too many things for women nowadays. I think we're gonna need to create some things for men. You're sure right, brother. Thongs for men. What? No! Uh, he named the brand after the Victorian era in England, wanting to evoke the refinement of this period in his lingerie. And if you look at some of the older catalogs, you will see that everything was very refined. Sexy and, well, a common theme of Victoria's Secret, a fantasy. I got some fantasies about those mo- No, I don't. In June of 1982, the brand was almost bankrupt, and at this point, a key antagonist steps in. His name is Les Wexler, um, who founded Al Brands, formerly known as The Limited. Ooh, it was very limited, you know? You would only go on to Al Brands if you have, uh, six different kinds of eating disorders, and if you look like your, um, vacuum seal. L Brands also owns Abercrombie & Fitch, which had its own slew of problems with the CEO of the brand, and the body image issues that men had to grapple with in the brand's marketing. A CEO of Abercrombie even once was quoted saying this. <clears throat> Let me put on my CEO voice. It's almost everything marketing to cool, conventionally attractive people, Jeffries told Salon Magazine. That's why we hire good-looking people in our stores. Because good-looking people attract other good-looking people. And we want to market to cool, good-looking people. Take a shot 
Every time he says that. Blacking out and you're not waking up. We don't market to anyone other than that. Are we exclusionary? Absolutely. These companies that are in trouble are trying to target everybody. Young, old, fat, skinny. And you know me. I'm very voluptuous with a body fat percentage of five. I only weigh 200 pounds. I'm a muscular, very muscular man. The dude who said this, by the way, looks like this. We're just gonna move on because YouTube doesn't like it when you bully people. I'm not bullying. I'm just saying this is what he looks like, you know? That's what he looks like. But the, the point I'm trying to make is that L Brands has a very negative history within a lot of its brands. And it's hard to go back on that. A lot of fashion brands will never be inclusive or ethical because for decades they weren't. When Leslie took over, he wanted to change the marketing of the brand to focus more on women and the liberation that they could feel with wearing sexy lingerie. If only Raymond would have accepted that part of himself. By the early 1990s, Victoria's Secret had become the largest lingerie retailer in the US with 350 stores nationally and sales topping 1 billion. When would be done? In 1995, they wanted to further expand the branding of Victoria's Secret. This is when the fashion show was born. Born out of Leslie Wexner's asshole. Gaping at me. Um, from the minds of Leslie and Ed Razik, it came from their minds. Ed Razik, longtime chief marketing officer of L Brands, it was alive! It was alive. Razik and his team were responsible for handpicking the models to walk the show. Because of this, he became one of the most important people in the modeling world, helping to launch the careers of Giselle. Giselle Bunchen. Giselle Bunchen. Tyra Banks and Heidi Klum. This is when the Angels branding was created. If only they used biblically accurate angels on the runway. Now that, I think that would have titulated a lot of tongues. Someone is, you know, someone is into that. And I'm not talking about myself. The brand sales kept rising and rising for the next two decades. In 2016, the female CEO, Sharon Jester, Turney, S S J T S J T. It's a fire name. S S shit it. Shit. Stepped down, which led to a slew of changes made by Leslie Wexner. Wexner made a series of quick and fast changes. Killing the tap catalog, swimwear, and apparel to focus solely on lingerie, the core part of its business. He also split the brand into three, Victoria's Secret Lingerie, Victoria's Secret Beauty, and Pink, and recruited a CEO for each division. Pink, I think they're still in business, but at the time I was young. Pink, as we know, was heavily marketed towards teen girls, with Pink even having their own version of the fashion show with even younger models, which is a real man's fantasy. At this time, body positivity, Me Too, and ethical shopping were becoming more and more mainstream. Between 2016 and 2018, its market share in the US dropped from 33% to 24%. But the company's biggest hit was yet to come. And that was in the form of a plane hitting their headquarters. No, that was a metaphor. That was, that was a metaphor. <laughs> YouTube, come on. Did you pass English class metaphor? You know, I can't define it, but I know what it is. And on November 21st, 2019, the company confirmed that it had officially canceled its runway fashion show that year. And we, mo we mourn, we mourn the loss of it. It was my everything. What? In 2020, their sales dipped to the lowest that they have been since 2010. And since then, they have been unable to reach back to their past heights. No, my money. They haven't been able to reach their past heights until now. No, no, it's worse now. Sorry to burst your bubble. Why though? What made Victoria's Secret so controversial? It can't be for no reason. It can't just be for wokeness. This, this woke idea, it's not. First and foremost, we have to address the elephant in the room. No, I'm talking about the other elephant. Sorry, uh, body image. One commonly researched influence on body image is exposure to unrealistic ideal body image 
uh, bodies through film, television, magazines, advertising, and social media. Wow, that is a quadruple whammy. Exposure to these images is thought to facilitate young... Uh, exposure to these images is thought to facilitate valuing these ideals and unrealistic body types. One study which followed 14 to 15 year olds over three years found the internalization of these ideal body shapes as presented in the media predicted negative emotions about appearance, which in turn predicted unhealthy eating behaviors. In our survey, 25% of young people, 13% of boys and 37% of girls said celebrities have caused them to worry about their body image. And 90%, 10% of boys and 28% of girls said TV shows caused them to worry about their body image. Putting aside the obesity epidemic in America, it's a big thing to push aside. Just by looking at these women, I mean, it's very obvious that the average woman doesn't look like this, even if she's not fucking morbidly obese, okay, guys? Again, again, no, I don't mean that. Everyone's a fat pig nowadays. No one fucking eats healthy. Says the guy who's gonna die in two years from his cholesterol. Okay, shut the fuck up, okay? What I mean is that it's just uh, outright unnatural to expect women to have a stomach that is the flattest plane in the observable universe. Not only this, but everyone is genetically built differently. Surprise, surprise. Some women are shorter, wider, not six foot with 20 inch hips. They are supermodels. Not just model, but super. Can they fly too? Because I've always had this fantasy. No. <sighs> this is honestly like a no brainer. If you have, if you have passed, I'd say first grade, uh, if you learn to count, if you learn to read a, a uh, an analog clock, you could figure this out. Seeing people who look like you makes you appreciate your body more. Not, you don't just have to, you don't have to love it, but it makes you accept you, yourself for who you are. And guess what, accepting yourself is the first step into taking care of yourself. Wow, if only we knew that, you know, berating someone for being fat doesn't usually help. I, what? And this doesn't go for just fat people, but physically disabled people, old people, people of all different colors, shapes, and sizes, that are typically excluded from this talk about the body positivity movement. It's not about promoting obesity. Oh, everyone wants to be fat nowadays because it's so easy and great to be fat. What? It's about being able to go to a fucking store and see the clothes you're gonna buy on someone who looks like you. Knowing that they make clothes for someone your size. You can't just lose weight overnight. You have to wear clothes. Fat women, fat people buy clothes too. I think there would be a bigger problem if everyone was walking around, if every fat person was walking around naked, just started flashing everyone because they're gonna find clothes in their size. What do you wanna see? Naked people everywhere? Or do you wanna see people covered up in clothes that fit them, that look nice on them, that they can enjoy? I would prefer the former, but that's just me. That the models themselves, the models themselves, and yet people still don't think this is a problem. They have spoken out about the gruesome training and diet reg regimes that they have had to endure to look like this. Because guess what? Can you guess? I'm waiting. I'm waiting. For most people, looking like this is virtually impossible. Now, I'm not saying it is unrealistic to be thin, period. But to this level? Now, that's unrealistic. Just like with men. When you see men who are literally saran wrapped, they took their fucking body, took their skin off, and then saran wrapped them? It's very hard to get down to 3% body fat, okay? And to maintain that is also a problem, okay? I think a lot of people don't realize that training takes time. Eating well is also time consuming, fucking financially consuming, and getting enough sleep and everything else on top of that to lose weight in a healthy way can be difficult. So why don't you starve yourself, right? Guess I eat you for boss. We are told that these women are athletes, that they are in peak condition and they are aggressively fit. But this is not the Olympics or the Paralympics. There are no medals to be won. This is a lingerie show. It is no wonder that many of the models exercise obsessively. The show's strict weight and body fat requirements, hennessly speculated on in the media, would be far beyond the reach of most adult women. Indeed, they are far beyond the reach of most models, which is why the 50 or so who are picked for the Victoria's Secret family each year must endure months of dieting and exercise. Model Robin Lawley says, this whole starvation camp situation before you have to walk that catwalk is ridiculous. Some of them are my friends on that stage. I'm not pulling them apart, but they have to put their bodies to such extremes once they cast the show, they couldn't maintain that kind of lifestyle or they die. Exactly. It's like people who, bodybuilders, you train for a show, you cut for a show, you get down to 3% if that's your goal, right? For the show. 
you go back up. You cannot maintain 3% very well. That's hard to do. These women are, they're, I can't even speculate. It's, it's probably below 10%. I'm guessing it's below 10%. And I also think a lot of people forget that it's, it's generally not healthy and not advised for women to be below 15% body fat for extended periods of time. I know some female bodybuilders who do reach that for shows. Sometimes they go sub 10%, um, but for months on end, one diet suggested by trainer, uh, trainer Steven Pasterino. Pasterino, okay. It's so restrictive that by the end, even cauliflower and broccoli are out. Adriana Lima, the brand's longest serving model, told the Telegraph in 2011 that she cuts out all solid food nine days before an appearance. Many models do not drink fluids either. Dehydration is a massive problem, one fashion editor told me. In 2016, another former angel, Erin Heatherton, said that she had been pressured to lose weight by the company. Despite exercising twice a day and following a strict meal plan, she was unable to meet the target set for her. I got to a point where one night I got home from a workout and I remember staring at my food and thinking maybe I should just not eat, she said. I realized I couldn't go out into the world parading my body and myself in front of all these women who look up to me and tell them that this is easy and simple and everyone can do this. And that's the thing about getting down to this weight serious moment. You see men and women get down to these sizes. You get you see men who are huge and have, you know, are their five percent body fat, they have an eight pack, washboard abs, women too, and they always say it's not easy to do this. But still, that's the most aspirational thing to everyone. Even though everyone says, hey guys, it's not easy. It's not fun maintaining yourself like this. Yeah, everyone still wants to have abs. Yet this is what I and many other young people grew up with. What is still to some extent seen as the most attractive version of the female body. Obviously, there's been some molding and shaping, molding of a bigger, bigger, bigger bosom, you know what I'm saying? Lately. Now we're going for the natural look. Remove your BBLs. Bibliaws are not cool anymore. Now we want natural booties. And if you're flat as a pancake, then we are gonna make fun of you for that too. But hey, we're gonna, we're gonna move on from that. Another factor in the Victoria's Secret controversial hi history is Ed Raisin, who, like I said, Holy ran the fashion show. Or as I like to call it, the softcore porn show that CBS can play once a year. That was uh, heavily guarded from my, my fault, but we're not gonna get into that. The misogynistic atmosphere was an open secret at the company. By the time the Victoria's Secret fashion show began airing in prime time in 2001, the flagrantly strange and casually misogynistic proffered by its host, the actor Rupert Everett, was directeur. Sorry to French people. Uh, security is tight and so are the girls, he says early in the broadcast. Oh! Oh! I sound like Peter Griffin. Oh! 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 <laughs> that hurt! It hurt my budget. No. What the fuck? Who says that? Why would you say that? And I'm not gonna fucking do- Well, it was okay to say in 2001. No, it wasn't. Yeah, a lot of things are tight around here. Like my asshole. Any twinks out there? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Later, after warning viewers to lock your wives or girlfriends in the attic- Oh my god. <laughs> hey man, lock them in the attic, tie them up in bondage without their consent. He takes us on a virtual tour of Heidi Klum's body, rubbing his face up and down her smooth golden leg. When he sniffed and kissed it, he then pretended to be impaled by a single errant hair. I had an instinctual urge to slap his face away. I have an instinctual urge to throw myself off a cliff right now. So, we're similar, aren't we? Ed Razek, for decades one of the top executives at L Brands, the parent company of Victoria's Secret, was the subject of repeated complaints about inappropriate contact. He tried to kiss models. He then asked them to sit on his lap. He touched one's crotch ahead of the 2018 Victoria's Secret fashion show. Ed raised, <laughs> wow, okay, I don't even know. I don't have much to say about that. That's, that's horrendous. Ed Brazek, the chief marketing officer at Victoria's Secret, who in 2018 claimed transsexual models should not be cast because the show is a fantasy, resigned days after the lingerie brand hired its first openly transgender model. Oh, that's what we call karma. I love that. <laughs> Destroyed by wokeness, lost his job. Rip. Razik71 made his comments in an interview with Vogue last year in which he also claimed plus size bottles did not fit the Victoria's Secret mold and audience has had no interest in seeing them. He later apologized for his quote unquote insensitive remarks. Of course, you know, trans women and fat women are not included in this fantasy until now. The last thing I'd like to mention is about the brand is Wexner's alleged ties alleged, uh, to Jeffrey Epstein. 
If you'd like more info on this, I highly suggest you check out the Hulu documentary Angel and, Angels and Devils. I watched that a couple months ago. Very informative. The interviews with the models and employees add to a picture of Victoria's Secret as a troubled organization. An image that was already coming into focus last year when Mr. Wexner's ties to the sex criminal Jeffrey Epstein became public. Mr. Epstein, who managed Mr. Wexner's multi- Why do I say Mr. Oh, sir! Sir! Multi-billion dollar fortune lured some young women by posing as a recruiter for Victoria's Secret models. It was only after Epstein died that Wexner described the relationship, and even then in opaque terms. In Wexner's telling, he was another Epstein victim preyed upon by the devious mastermind being taken advantage by someone who was so sick, so cunning, so depraved. It is something that I'm embarrassed that I was even close to, Wexner said during a speech in September 2019. As Epstein's wealth grew, his predatory behavior became more brazen. He sometimes used his connections to Victoria's Secret and his schemes, a pattern at least some executives at the company were aware of. Epstein often invoked Wexner's authority to make his employees feel as though they worked for him. Epstein would call you and wouldn't give his name. He'd just start talking and expect you to know who he was. A former senior executive said. This is only a snippet of the relationship. I got this from the one article I'll link down below. That is, it's like a long expose into their relationship. If you want to read all of it, go right ahead. Not great stuff. It seems like everyone was connected to Jeffrey Epstein. Almost everyone. I wonder what that's all about. I'm not, that's not a QAnon thing, by the way. I'm just genuinely like, seems like a lot of people were connected to him. Hmm. Since all this has very recently come to light, people are not as big of fans of the company anymore. At least that's what I think. And Victoria needed a rebrand. She's busted. Ew, remember when James Charles used to say that? In November of 2019, the fashion show was Hashtag cancel. They're canceling everyone nowadays. They're gonna come for me to next with pitchforks down my driveway. The Amish are gonna come. People around the world were outraged. Outraged. And held moments of silence for what we lost. Let's have let's have a moment right now. I ate a lot of spicy food the other day. I will miss a show that I never fucking watched. Curse you, mother! <laughs> Victoria's Secret, the tour 23. That's just abbreviated 23. That's what we're... 23. I'm feeling 23. I'm not actually. I'm more feeling 20. An attempt to revive the runway show format that launched last month fell somewhere in between the personification of male lust of the brand's aughts era heyday and the inclusive utopia promoted by many its disruptors. Now there were two sides to this. That's four. There's two sides to every coin. Hate and love, same side of the same coin. <gasps> There's uh, opposite sides of the same coin. That, that's what I'm... One day I hate you, one day you love me. The, the two sides were people who were upset because God forbid someone fat or trans the model. Let's go back to one that were only white people on TV too. <laughs> and people who were genuinely disappointed in the rebrand. Of course, the conservatives took the Victoria's Secret back, receiving backlash for the new show and tried to blame it on wokeness. Oh, oh, I'm woke, motherfucker. I'm woke. The Daily Loud tweets, and you know when they tweet, it's always good. And it's never misinformation. Victoria's Secret is reportedly done with prioritizing quote unquote wokeness over quote unquote sexiness after sales drop. Uh, if you go back to the original article, it had nothing to do with wokeness. The bottom line was that the brand was never inclusive and this was a piss poor attempt at doing show. Doing show. I did see some people who were genuinely happy about uh, Victoria's Secret. They had like a, a line for physically disabled people. I think most people were pretty upset though, especially when it came to the uh, fat and trans model. Um, the fat models and the trans model. Many pe people complained that the clothes did not look good on the plus size models, and it just wasn't as fun to watch like the previous shows. I will link some in-depth analysis for you since I didn't watch it, and I don't plan on it, okay? We're not doing it. 
The fantasy's over for me, okay? I'm not, and we're not going back to 2016. It will never be 2016 again. Not, not actually sure if that's a year anyone would be yearning for, but... And we will never go back to 2020. Oh, what a great year. <laughs> the bird. <laughs> Victoria's Secret learned very quickly that women with dicks don't sell laundry. And I'm sure the motherfucker with uh, the Bitmoji profile pic would definitely sell more than the trans model Valentina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, if you just do a quick Google search, although it doesn't matter, Google will tell us that Valentina, the trans model uh, for Victoria's Secret, had bottom surgery years ago. She literally does not have a penis anymore. And again, I'm not saying you need it or you should have it to be respected or anything, but they always immediately assume that you still have your, I don't know what else, original genitalia. That sounds so fucking weird. Yeah, do you still have your original geni? Genitalia, huh? <laughs> and it's like, no, people can get, people can get bottom surgery. <laughs> Vaginoplasties are actually very, very sophisticated nowadays. Have you seen the result? They're very good. And I don't mean that in a weird way, by the way. Stop taking everything I say weird, guys. They took their fucking body, took their skin off, and then saran wrapped them? I believe that Victoria's Secret is having a moment. The bottom line is that women are in shape and sexy are better marketing image. Go figure. In shape is apparently starving yourself. Anorexia is in. <laughs> if you want to get skinny, just shoot yourself up. <laughs> Again, the thing with Victoria's Secret is this is all very performative and people aren't having it. At least, I think that's why most people are upset. Of course, there's always gonna be the, the what they like to call the silent majority. No, you're the loud minority. You're the very incessantly loud minority. I've said that before, I think. Who get upset because, oh my God, fat women wear, wear lingerie too. What are you talking about? And it's so funny. I know these motherfuckers have seen a trans woman and not known she was trans and thought she was sexy. And I know they've seen fat women and thought they were sexy too. Guys, stop lying to everyone. Anyway, their sales have been going down since 2020. So it's it's actually no surprise that the show is not receiving positive feedback. Not to mention the sh brand was pushing for more athleisure and clothes, like regular clothing for the past few years, which is completely going against its original image of you know, sexy, chic lingerie that makes women feel empowered. Ugh. I think it's a facade and people can see through that. Now, maybe they are, you know, really trying to remedy themselves. But I think this is a last ditch effort because the sales have been, you know, saying, and they're like, please put it up, up in the butt, please. The brand, at least in my opinion, which I'm always right. So guys, take my opinion as fact. It's not doing poorly because of <laughs> or because fat women or trans women aren't sexy. It's because of the aforementioned things I just fucking listed, right? If you just know, if you could just do a single Google search on why is Victoria's Secret controversial? Look, click, clickety clack. <laughs> like when you're wearing those heels when the twink comes to see you in your bedroom. <gasps> what? You will discover why the brand isn't very popular anymore. In its most recent results for the second quarter of this year, Victoria's Secret reported a net loss of $1 million compared to the net income of $70 million for the same period in 2022. Second quarter 2023 operating income also fell to $26 million compared to $98 million for the same period last year. Another problem with this brand is the male gaze aspect of it. Literally started as a brand for men. Guys, I just say you like wearing thongs. I don't, <laughs> it's, it's normal, okay? If all range diverse of women were dressed as the signature Victoria's Secret Angels, that doesn't translate to respecting them for who they really are. Why do I do that when I talk? The, the chip is still stuck in my brain. Elon Musk, he put it in me the other night. I swear to God, he slipped into my bed and he put his thing in my head. He put his thing in me, okay? I swear to God. That doesn't translate to respecting them for who they really are because the fashion show will beg us to view them as sex objects. Plus size women are just as capable of being objectified as women who are size zero. The Victoria's Secret fashion show does not celebrate or empower women. Yes, it shows off their bodies, which are good, but our bodies alone do not reveal our full identity, especially when diminished to objectifying standards. The other major problem to the decline of Victoria's Secret is fast fashion. Why would women want to buy a $60 cheap bra in terms of quality instead of a $20 or less bra at fucking Walmart. Why? 
people have complained that the quality has dipped down in the past couple of years too. So it's not even like you're spending your hard earned money on a nice piece of lingerie anymore. The brand didn't start out as inclusive. They're trying to now. It's not being well received. It is what it is, right? I think Victoria's Secret was selling a fantasy and I think that a lot of people would prefer they keep it that way instead of trying to rebrand in the most unauthentic way. Personally, I don't really care that much because I don't pay attention to Victoria's Secret anymore, but I understand why people who are fat, why people who are disabled and do, are not able-bodied and do not fit into conventional beauty standards, why they are disappointed in seeing this. So if you guys want some better options, I'll link a few websites down below for you uh, to peruse. My, my dreams were always wanting to wear Victoria's Secret lingerie. Now I realize I wanted to wear their skin. Anyway, that's it for me. That's the end of this video. I really, really hope you all enjoyed this video. I thought it would be interesting to talk about this because it's, it's off and popping. And I had, I honestly, honest to God, I did uh, have a connection with Victoria's Secret when I was younger just because my mom got the magazines all the time or whatever. And I always looked at those models and was like, wow, this is, they're so beautiful, you know? I never knew about any of this bullshit, you know? Let me know what you all think about their rebrand and what do you think about them going back to what they used to be? Whatever the fuck, I don't know. Stop flip-flopping. Pick a side, pick a side, okay? Let me know if I missed anything. Comment down below anything you wanna comment down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I post comedy and commentary videos every Sunday at 12 p.m. Eastern, so if that sounds like your thing, make sure to subscribe and turn your notification bell so you know when I post a video. Seriously though, uh, that's it for me and that's it for this video. I really, really hope you all enjoyed this video and I hope you like my haircut. If you don't, I don't give a shit, yeah. I don't give a single shit, yeah. Okay, I don't. All right, bye. I got nightmares in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper